In this video, we are going to discuss how do we solve equations using factorizing with 10 examples and then follow up 10 questions. I hope you'll master the technique by the end of this video. Let's enjoy factorizing. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we will see how to solve equations by factorizing. It is a very important technique learned in around grade 9. We have questions here which grade 10 and 11 students will also enjoy. So as you can see we have 10 problems here which we are going to solve in this particular video. It might take about 15 minutes. Understand the concept and then we are going to solve each one of them. After this said, here is second set of videos which is for you to practice and that's why I'm calling this more like a worksheet. Once you understand the concepts, you should be in a position to do all these 10 questions on your own. Later, I will also provide solution for these. I hope at the end of the exercise, you will be mastering the technique of solving equations by factorizing. So let's begin with the very first question. You can see the variety, right? Coefficients could be negative, could have some leading coefficient, which is not one, or we could have two terms or three terms, right? A lot of variety is here for you. And in the practice set, we have included uh, more variety for you. All right. Okay. So let's get back to question number one and start cracking. We need to solve x square minus 2x equals to zero. A very simple example. The process of factorizing really means to write as product of two, right? So we need to write in terms of products. So that is the concept. We are given the question, which is x square minus 2x equals to 0. x can be taken as a common factor. Dividing x square by x, we get x minus 2 equals to 0. Once you get this, this is called the factored form, right? So, what we have got here is the factored form. To solve the equation, each factor can be 0. So we'll equate them to zero and find the solution. You get the idea. This is the basic concept which we are going to follow. So the first factor is x. x alone is zero. That is our first solution. So we can write our solution as x equals to zero, right? That is our first solution. The second factor here is x minus two. So when I equate x minus two to zero, I can take two to the other side and x equals to 2 is the second solution, right? So we get x equals to 0 and x equals to 2 as two solutions for this particular equation. I hope the concept is clear, right? Let's take another one which is very similar to the one we just took. And this time, again, we have a question which is minus 5x squared plus 2x. I like you to factor whatever can be and then you are going to get two factors, right? Equate each one of them to 0 to find the solution. Well, we could factor minus x in this case, correct? So, if you factor minus x, you get 5 here and minus 5x, sorry, and minus 2, right? Since we have x squared, divided by x will be 5x, and here we have minus 2. Since we have taken minus x as a factor. Now, that gives you two solutions as you can very clearly see. The very first one is that minus x is equal to 0, that means x equals to 0. For the second one, we are saying f of x minus 2 equals to 0, or we can say f 5x is equal to 2, or x is equal to, dividing by 5 on both the sides, we get 2 over 5 as our answer. Is that clear to you? And so we say the answer here is x equals to 0, comma 2 by 5. So this is also another way of writing the solution. Is this process absolutely clear to you, right? So now let's begin with the trinomials. So these were the examples with binomials. Now we have a trinomial and this trinomial here is 
x square plus 6x plus 8. So let me rewrite. We have x square plus 6x plus 8 equals to 0. Now to factor this, we are going to use the strategy of product and sum, right? That is important strategy to understand. So we are looking for two numbers whose product should be what? Let's say that the two numbers are p and q. The product should be multiply the coefficients of x squared and the constant terms. Well, coefficient of x squared is 1, so it is only 8. And we are also looking for the sum of these two as plus 6, which is the coefficient of x. You get the idea. So the two numbers which will give us the solution are clearly what? 2 and 4, right? Both positive. So when you add 2 and 4, you do get 6. And that is the solution for us. We can write this as x plus 2 times x plus 4. If you expand this factored form, you'll get the original trinomial. That means you have correctly factored. Now that means what? We again have two solutions. One for each factor being 0, right? So we can equate x plus 2 equals to 0, which will give us x equals to minus 2 and x plus 4 equals to 0. That gives us x equals to minus 4. Is that clear to you, right? Now you can write down the solution or the answer, right? So solution here is x equals to minus 2 or minus 4. So both are the solutions for this particular equation, right? Next one here is question number 4, where we have a trinomial once again, which is x square minus 6x plus 8 equals to 0. So again, we are looking for what? We are looking for two numbers whose product should be what? Product should be 8 times 1, which is 8, and the sum should be the coefficient of x, which in this case, this time is minus 6. Do you see that? Last time it was plus 6, now minus 6. So, what should be the two numbers? Well, the two numbers clearly should be minus 4 and minus 2. Since when you add minus 4 and minus 2, only then you get minus 6. So, that gives you the factored form as x minus 4 times x minus 2, right? Equals to 0. Clearly, to get the solution, what are you going to do? You are going to equate the two factors to 0. So, we get what? We get x minus 4 equals to 0. That results into x equal to 4. And when you substitute x minus 2 to 0, you get x equals to 2. So this time, our solution is what? Well, clearly, the solution is x is either 4 or 2. Both will make this equation true. So both are the solutions. Clear? So like this, I think it is now a simple process. So we have x square plus 7x plus 12. So, so we have once again x square plus 7x. It is a trinomial. Can you tell me what could be the two numbers which when multiplied will give you 12? So when you multiply, you need 12. And when you add, you need what? You need 7, right? And clearly the two numbers are 4 and 3. So when you multiply 4 and 3, you get 12. When you add them up, you get 7. So, we could write this as x plus 4 times x plus 3 equals to 0, right? So, it is an equation where we have to make it equal to 0. Perfect. So, that means we have two different solutions. One is x plus 4 equals to 0 and the that results into x equals to minus 4. The other one is x plus 3 equals to 0 which results into the solution x equals to minus 3. And therefore, we have our answer, and that is x equals to minus 4 minus 3. So, there are different formats in which you could write, enjoy, right? Doing all 10 questions similar time is kind of boring sometimes. Perfect. So, change your formats, enjoy working. Well, in case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Most of my students are doing extremely well. They're right there on top of their class getting awards and scholarships. It's a road to success, which I say, and that's my logo here. Perfect. Now, let's continue with the solution. Here is question number six. Question number six is x squared minus 13x plus 12 
a equals to 0. We are looking for product and sum of two numbers, product of two numbers giving us plus 12 and sum of two numbers giving us minus 13. What could be those two numbers? Clearly, the numbers are 12 and 1, both negative. Do you see that? When you add these two negative numbers, you get minus 13. And so, I can factor this as x minus 12 times x minus 1 equal to 0. And clearly, that gives us again two different roots. The solutions are also called roots, right? So, we have x minus 12 equals to 0, which results in x equals to 12 and x minus 1 equals to 0. That provides us one more solution, which is x equals to 1. And therefore, we have two answers for this, x equals to 12 and x equals to 1. Sometimes you may like to sketch a graph of these types of functions. Clearly, this is a parabola which is opening upwards since x coefficient is positive with two roots, 12 and 1. So, I am not giving you the detail, but I am just telling you that it could be like this, where clearly the y-intercept here is going to be 12, right? And the x-intercepts are 1 and 12. Do you see that? So, that is how you could also sketch the parabola. Let's continue exploring more about the same equations. This time, we have x squared plus 20. Now, look here very carefully. We have an equation which is x squared plus 20 equals to 0. Now, x squared plus 20, can you factor it? No, we can't. Well, secondly, if you try to solve this, you'll get x squared equals to negative 20, right? Now, square is always positive. So, on the left-hand side, left-hand side, we have something which is always positive. On the right-hand side, we have something which is negative, right? So, that means there is no solution. You see that? It is important to see that some equations may not have any solutions. So, when we are working with quadratic equations, there are three possibilities. We may have two solutions, we may have one solution, or we may have no solution at all. Now, this is the case where there is no solution, correct? So, that is also part of our solution. So, we say answer is none, right? No solution. Perfect. Let's move on and take the next question, which is question number 8. So, we have this time 2x squared minus 16x plus 30 equals to 0. Now, factorizing, you can see that 2 is a common factor. Correct. So, if 2 is a common factor, we could factor this out. And what do we get? We get x squared, divide each term by 2, minus 8x, right? plus 15 equals to 0. You get the idea. So, now it is the question of factoring the trinomial inside. So, we have two outside and this time product and sum. Can you please work it out, right? So, we are looking for a product of two numbers to be equal to 15 and the sum of two numbers equals to minus 8. So, two numbers are clearly 5 and 3, both negative, right? So, we could write this as x minus 5 times x minus 3. Makes sense, right? E equals to 0. Now, from here, you can easily write down the solutions for the given equation. Two solutions this time, x minus 5 equals to 0, gives you x equals to 5. And x minus 3 equals to 0, provides you with the solution of x equals to 3. And therefore, we have two answers. One is x equals to 5 and the other one, 3. Does it make sense to you, right? So, I hope with this, you have extremely good knowledge of factoring, right? So, we have another question here coming up, which may have a different result. We have x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals to 0. Now, here, what do you need as a product? Well, we need product of two numbers as equal to 1, and we need sum of two numbers as equal to 2. Clearly, the numbers can be what? Just 1 and 1, right? Product is 1 when two numbers are 1, right? So, we get what? We get x plus 1 times x plus 1. Do you see that? So, in this case, we have only one solution, right? Because both are giving you minus 1 as the answer, right? So, you could also write this as x plus 1 whole square equals to 0. Now, this is also called a perfect square, right? 
The solution here is x is equal to minus 1. So that is the only answer for us. It has only one solution, x equals to minus 1. So do you see the variety? We started with a couple of questions which had two answers, then one which did not have any solution. I mean no real solution, correct? We are looking for the real solutions. Well, if you graph this particular thing, how will this look like, right? Let's try to visualize, right? One root. So it is a parabola definitely opening upwards and the roots are at minus 1, right? So, so minus 1 is this particular point, correct? So that becomes the minus 1 and the y-intercept is at plus 1. So something like this. Does it make sense to you, right? So easy to sketch also, right? So that becomes the parabola representing the situation. Now that is the double root. There are two roots at this point and so it is a turning point. So remember this, it is a turning point on the graph. Perfect. The last question here involves difference of squares. We have now x squared minus 9 equals to 0. When we are using the factoring techniques, now tell me, what should be the product of two numbers, p and q? Well, the product should be minus 9, right? And what should be the sum of two numbers? Sum, you see, it is like x squared plus 0x, right? Plus 9 equals to 0. So sum has to be 0. So what the numbers could be? Well, plus and minus 3 will give us the result, right? So we could factor this as x plus 3 times x minus 3 equals to 0. And these two gives us the answer x plus 3 equals to 0 means x equals to minus 3. And x minus 3 equals to 0 gives us x equals to 3 as a real solution. So now the answer here is that x equals to plus or minus 3. So we have two real solutions. Do you understand? So with that, we come to an end of this series where we have done 10 videos. And now, here are the 10 questions for you to practice. Correct? So I hope you have mastered all these strategies. i like you to now copy these questions, practice. And in case you have doubt, feel free to contact me on the address given. You can also learn directly from me. You can send a request on the website or by email. Thanks for your time and all the best.